In this video, we're going to take a look at the Nissan flavor of wiring. These are all from a 97 Nissan Pathfinder service manual. These are the instructions that are found in the general information section. Looking at the battery symbol up here at the top, they have two different style of fuses. These are classified as a maxi fuse. I think they'll even call it a fusible link. It's actually just another fuse, a little bit larger amperage. The numbers, the lines with the circles, if you go to the next few pages in the service manual, it'll explain what each one of these are. The L, that is blue. G slash R is going to be green slash red wire. We have a black dot right here, which is a splice. Over here, you'll see that it is just the outline, not filled in. Same thing down here. That's an optional splice. To know if your vehicle has that option, you have to look on the wiring diagram. So down here you see the A, over here you see an M, and on the wiring diagram it would tell you manual or automatic transmission. This is their connector right here. You can see the females on the top, the male part is on the bottom. Nissan and Subaru are the only manufacturers that I know of that will name each half of the connector. Any other manufacturer, this would be C101 or something like that. But on Nissan, the female is E5, the male is M4. And what that would tell you is this is the fifth connector of the engine wiring harness, the E5. This is the fourth connector of the main wiring harness. This is going to be where the main wiring harness plugs into the engine wiring harness. The A that we have over here with the arrow means you would go to the previous page. You would find the A and that would be the continuation of this wire. If the arrow is pointing to the right, it would be the next page. This piece over here is a joint connector. If you find a joint connector on the car, it's going to look like a connector, but it only have one connector that doesn't go anywhere. It almost looks like the connector is capped. Inside the connector is a metal piece that all of the terminals are shorted together. This was going to take the place of a splice. And we have down here the switch, and this would be a single pole double throw. It's closed either side. It would be like the uh, dimmer switch. And this one right here, this is actually our component. And the component's going to have the male terminals on it. And then this M12 connector plugs into this component right here. And we have cavity one, two, and three of that connector. This part over here, we haven't talked about yet. This part over here, we haven't talked about yet. This would be a twisted and shielded cable. And I put a picture of it over here. They take the wires inside and they twist them together. And that helps protect the wires from electromagnetic interference. To give it more protection, they wrap basically aluminum foil around it, but aluminum foil sounds really cheap, so they call it mylar. And the mylar is going to be grounded. If it is exposed to electromagnetic field that would induce a voltage into it, the voltage is going to be induced into the shielding that's on there go to ground and have a double protection. So here's our example of going to the next page where we have the B and the C a diode. When you get to the Nissan Diagnostic, and you will find this even in ProDemand and all data, they will actually take the Nissan Diagnostic and it's literally just scanned right in there. You have to pay attention if it has the TS. That means they want you to test it on the terminal side. It's going to look like this. You have to have it unplugged in order to test on the terminal side. If it has the HS testing on the harness side, the connector is still going to be plugged in. You're going to back probe. So take a T-pin, paper clip that you've straightened out, something that you can back probe inside of here without damaging the connector. Nissan will also identify whether it's a male or a female connector that you're looking at. With this darkened in, that's going to be the male. If it's just outlined, that's going to be the female side. And to have you doing the diagnostic, you got to pay attention so you know whether to do the test on the female side or the male side of the connector when you have it unplugged. Nissan also, and I really like this, especially when you get a diagram that's really small, if it is a normally open switch, they have it outlined instead of filled in. If it's normally closed, it's darkened in all the way. This is another feature I like about the Nissan. Their switches, they will actually show you which terminals have continuity in which position. So let's say on this one, you have a problem with the wipers. You suspect that it's a bad switch. 
unplug the switch from the vehicle with the wiper switch in the off position, you will have continuity between pin 3 and pin 4. Turn it to low position, you will have continuity between pin 3 and pin 6. If there was continuity on one of these other ones, they would have another circle drawn in there, and that would mean there was continuity between 3, 5, and 6. Here's their super multiple junction, which other manufacturers would call this a bulkhead connector. You can see the male and female side. There's so many cavities in this that they can't just number it or letter it. They have the columns and rows. So you have A, B, C for the columns. One, two, three for the rows going across. And these two, you have to take a look at my image up in the corner, but these two are going to be like a book. They're actually going to plug together like this. Your B1 second from the outside over here is going to be B1 second from the outside also. When you get over into the electrical section of the Nissan manuals, they'll actually show you what you need to push, pull, to be able to get the connectors apart. Most connectors, admittedly, are easy enough to see and get them apart. But every once in a while you get one that's just a pain to try to get it apart. The Bosch ones are uh, some of them that are a pain to get apart. Uh, Honda had one that was just terrible. It was the connector right next to the distributor on the older Honda Civics, at least that's what I remember on the Civics. First time I tried to get that connector apart, I was just ready to break the stupid thing and figure out okay, how to replace it. But you actually had to take the connector off of the metal bracket and then you could get the connector to come apart. Every once in a while, directions like this make it a lot easier. Nissan, again, you, unique in the industry, they make all their own relays. They have a gray relay, which is a three pin relay. It is a 1M, which is a 1 make. You can see your control side here, 1 to 2. And then 2 actually goes to both the control side and the switch side. Same thing that we looked at when we were looking at sort of transistors, when we talked about the transistor working like a relay. This would be the type of relay. There they show you in the wiring diagram. This is how the connectors or the pins look on the bottom of the relay. They have 1T, which is 1 transfer. This would be Nissan's equivalent of the ISO or the Bosch style relay. Pin 3 would be your 30, 4 would be your 57A, 5 would be 57, and then 1 and 2 would be your 85 and 86. They have a 2M, which is a 2 make, both contacts inside there. So this relay would actually have three circuits. It's going to have your control side and two switch sides. It's a brown relay. They have another gray relay, but this one is a six pin relay and it is a one make, one break. So like this, but for some reason, Nissan decided not to use a pin five on this. And their last one is a blue one. And then on the one make, which is just a four pin relay. Nissan has a power distribution, which all the manufacturers provide you a power distribution, which can be really handy when you're going to look at how power is going throughout the vehicle through the fuses. This is really good and this is useless at the same time. We can see battery up here. They have a 75 amp maxi fuse and that provides power to the other fuses over here. And these fuses are coming direct power, not fused. And you can see that this fuse is your horn, automatic speed control device, theft deterrent, if you look at just the top of the fuse box, it's only going to tell you it's just a horn relay, but there's actually two more circuits on there. The part of this circuit that makes it useless, what color is this wire? Where is this fuse? That's the part that makes this really good and useless at the same time. Here's their switch so you can see which terminals have power connected up to where and in what position. Then Nissan has, like other manufacturers, fuse block details, and this is the one where you really want to be. For example, if you had a, an excessive parasitic drain, so your battery keeps going dead, you put your amp meter on there and you find it's got 250 milliamps instead of the 50 milliamps or less that you want to see, you pull out this 15 amp fuse number 40 and it drops down to 13 milliamps. Bottom's on here, and we can look down here and see, okay, this is for the headlamp, it's also for the daytime running lamps, for the theft deterrent system, and LD signal. I'm not sure what that one is. 
Here we're going to take a look at one other circuit. This is our starter circuit. We have the starter motor. We have the starter solenoid. That's critical that you understand. The starter solenoid. See here, normally open contacts right there. The starter solenoid is also a relay. The solenoid is going to engage the pinion gear into the ring gear and then close these contacts. Really, really I'll keep calling the solenoid, but you got to keep in mind, this is a relay also. We have another relay up here for the starter motor to turn the engine over. This relay has to energize the starter solenoid, and this relay, relay has to energize. Anytime that you have a relay, you're looking at two separate circuits. We're going to have a control side, which is here, and then a switch side. Down here, this is going to be the control side, and then from there to there is going to be the switch side. This E108, that's your positive battery cable where it connects up onto the solenoid. So your two heavy terminals that are on the solenoid. That's going to be this one, and this is your motor terminal. Taking a look at how this is going to work, this fuse is going to be hot in ignition on and start, or the run and start position. That's going to provide power to Terminal 2 of the control side of this relay. Terminal 1, green wire with yellow stripe, is going to come down, and here's our optional splice. We have OT or TW, and then over here is our explanation. TW is with the theft warning system. OT is without the theft warning system. If we have a vehicle with the theft warning system, this green wire of yellow stripe is still going to stay the green wire. Then we go to the next page, our A and B. This comes over to another relay. And what is on this relay, it is normally closed. It's going to prevent the vehicle from starting is if this smart entrance control unit, which is Nissan's theft deterrent control module, if it thinks that the car's been broke into, it's not the right key or whatever, method they're using to determine that, they're going to ground this circuit, which is going to energize this relay, open that circuit, and the car is not going to start. We're going to pretend like this vehicle does not have a theft warning system, so that means there is no splice here. This green wire with the yellow stripe comes down, and you'll see that this says blue with the green. Now, it's only going to be blue with the green if you have the theft option. If you don't, it's going to be the green wire with the yellow stripe comes right to the clutch interlock switch. This is going to be located on the clutch pedal. Push the clutch pedal to the floor. This switch is going to close. E in the start position. Clutch pedal to the floor. That gives us our power and ground to this relay. These contacts should close. With the key in the start position, again, we're going to have battery voltage at this black wire with that yellow stripe. It's going to come through there, and this is going to come down and provide power for our relay here, our starter solenoid. The starter solenoid is actually divided in two. There's two separate windings in there. One goes directly to ground. The other one grounds through the motor. Once we have the power here, this side will ground through the motor. This side goes to ground right there. That's going to energize this. That plunger is going to push this forward, close the contacts, and the engine will crank. Well, that's the way it's supposed to run. On this one, the customer brought the vehicle in on a hook. So the vehicle doesn't start. First thing we're going to do is confirm the customer complaint. So we get inside there, push the clutch pedal to the floor, turn the key to the start position, and nothing. No click. I'm going to check to make sure it's not a battery problem. Just real quick and easy. On this vehicle, I can turn the lights on while I have the key in the start position. If the lights come on bright, it is not a battery problem. Now, you can't do that trick on some vehicles. For example, Subaru actually shuts off the headlights while you're cranking the engine. That would mislead you on that one. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find this relay. I'm going to have somebody get in the car, try to start it, and I'm going to have my finger on this relay. When they try to start it, I should be able to feel this relay click. To find the relay, I'm going to find a component locator. And on this one, you can see I have a relay box over here. I have another relay box over here. Go a little bit farther through their component locator. And here they show you the relay box on the driver's side, left-hand side of the vehicle. You can see the fender right here. This one is going to be the one on the right-hand side. I can see the fender there. It's sitting at a 90 degree angle. Here is my clutch interlock relay. It's the second one. Now, looking at this one, you see this one 
goes with the vehicle, which we have alongside the fender. This one's at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to be going for this second one in right there. I'm going to put my finger on top of that. Somebody that's walking by my work area, I'm going to ask them to come and try to start the vehicle. So they're going to put their foot on the clutch, turn the key to the start position. And when they turn their key to the start position, I can feel this click. Once I feel this click, now I know that everything on this side of the wiring diagram, so everything on the left there is good. The problem has to be over here on the right hand side. It is still possible that the relay contacts are burned. I'm going to pull this relay out, this 1M relay. There will be another 1M relay or probably a half a dozen more of those 1M relays. I'm going to swap it. Put it in there, try to start it. If the engine starts, it's a bad relay, replace that, car's diagnosed. If it still doesn't start, which on this example we're going to say it still didn't start, I know it's not the relay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a test light, a voltmeter. I'm going to probe right here, turn the key to the start position, and I want to see battery voltage. If I see battery voltage here, I now know that everything above there is good. That means now the wire problem, not the wire, but the problem has to be from pin 5 to the starter motor. On these Nissan which I believe this year was still the 3 liter, it might have been the 3300. If you try to look at this from the back, all you're going to see is the transmission. If you try to look at it from the left hand side, the engine is there. Right hand side, the exhaust manifold goes over the top of this. If you try to look at it from the front, there's a motor mount right in front of there. The only way you're going to get to this is to drop the starter motor out. Now, I don't want to start to drop the starter motor out if I have a wire problem. What I want to do is I want to run a test at this connector right here. So remember, Nissan uses two connectors for the male and the female. So I'm going to find either E49 or E104. Down at the bottom of the page, they show me E104 is a gray connector, single cavity. All right, that's pretty easy. However, there's another gray connector, single cavity, that's round. So I need a little bit more than that. I'm going to go back to the component locator. And on the component locator, I'm going to find the engine wiring harness. And on the engine wiring harness, I can see the E42, 43, 44. And I come to my E49. Here's the information that I need. E49. Again, it's telling me gray connector, single cavity. Plugs into E104. Same thing the wiring diagram showed us. Over here, this is actually grid location. I come to this diagram. Here's my C. Just imagine these lines coming straight down. And here's my 2 coming out over here. And there's my E49. That spot right there. Looking at this drawing, can you tell what you're looking at? These diagonal lines right here, this is the A pillar right hand side. This area here, this is going to be the windshield. This is going to be your right front fender. This circle right here with that kind of a square shape right there, that's the strut tower. E49 is going to be just in front of the strut tower, right hand side. I come and look right there, find that E49 connector. Let's move back up to our wiring diagram. I can either back probe it or I can unplug it. Uh, ideally, I want to back probe it so I have the circuit stressed. Uh, if I unplug it and there's a lot of resistance and I use a voltmeter, the voltmeter is going to tell me that everything's good because the voltmeter has 10 million ohms of internal resistance. So I can have 9 million ohms of resistance on there and the meter is still going to tell me full battery voltage. I'm going to back probe here, put my voltmeter on there, turn the key to the start position, and I find that I have voltage here. At this point now, it's either going to be this terminal here that's bad or something with the starter motor, it doesn't matter which one it is, the starter has to drop out of there. But I, can, I figured that out before I had to take all of that apart. I hope that helps you with the Nissan way of doing wiring diagrams. We will take a look on the next video of the Pro Demand with the same vehicle.